Hello everyone, and welcome to your complete and ultimate Faruzan guide. Faruzan is a unique character, being the only dedicated animal support and buffer. And in preparation for her being on Wanderer's upcoming rerun banner, this video is to hopefully guide any current or future Faruzan owners on how to roughly build and play her. This video will cover all of the following in order. General playstyle, talent overview, weapon options, artifact sets and stats, team comps, constellation overview, and an Abyss 12 showcase with multiple animo DPSs, all in an as condensed manner as possible. Just as a disclaimer, my main account's Faruzan is C6, but my alt account's Faruzan is only C3. Big thanks to Jasper for lending me his account to record Xiao footage as well, on which he also has a C6 Faruzan. Basically, just keep in mind that any footage you see when paired with Kazaha or Xiao is with a C6 Faruzan, and any footage with Wanderer is with a C3 Faruzan. On. With all of that out of the way, let's get right into the guide. Faruzan is first and foremost a support who is focused on buffing the damage of an animal DPS in the team. As such, she is quite limited in her team comps due to her role being relatively niche. While she is also a minor crowd controller and slight battery at C6, her utility is greatly diminished in non-animal focused teams, but is still kinda usable. Because of this though, I won't really be focusing on her non-animal teams, but also due to the fact that her playstyle doesn't really change anyways. Faruzan has a key focus on her burst, as it makes up all of her support potential pre-C6 and most of it when you are at C6. However, her ability to actually generate energy pre-C6 is quite bad, so Faruzan is incentivized to be built with a ton of energy recharge for burst uptime. As of right now, while every animal character can be used as a DPS to some degree, the main ones that actually have decent main DPS potential to utilize Faruzan are Wanderer, Xiao, and occasionally Kazaha. Heizou is also usable and an okay unit, but is severely limited by the fact that he is a 4 star which caps his DPS ceiling, while Jean and Venti are definitely better catered supports themselves. As such, if you don't use Wanderer, Xiao, or a DPS Kazaha, I have a pretty hard time recommending you build Faruzan from a meta perspective. Outside of animal teams, Faruzan at C6 is also usable as a VV Shredder and Minor Crowd Controller, but is a general worse option than other animal units such as Venti, Sucrose, and Kazaha. I also want to touch on Faruzan's value as a unit prior to C6, even in this animal buffer role. While I do think that she is decently worth building, she is significantly lower value than other potential characters. With the exception of Xiao, you might just be better off building your other sub DPSs such as Xiang Ling and Xing Chou first before working your way to Faruzan. However, the benefit is that unless you are also building Faruzan for damage, she is relatively easy to gear up since you only have to worry about energy recharge. Once you have enough energy recharge to comfortably maintain burst uptime, she's pretty much set. Just see what works for you and how much you want to prioritize your animal DPS versus your actual team damage. Alright, starting with Faruzan's talents. Just to quickly gloss over her normal attack string, it's relatively useless. And her charge shot without her skill just deals one instance of animal damage. Again, it's pretty useless. Faruzan's elemental skill is pretty similar to Kujo Sara's if you are at all familiar with it, but with a few differences. Firstly, activating it will reduce her charge shot time down to only 1 second. When it is fired, it will deal AoE animal damage and drag enemies in with its pressurized collapse, giving Faruzan some crowd control capabilities. At the same time, it will also reduce the animal resistance of any enemy tagged by this charge shot by 30%. This skill generates two animal particles when it hits an enemy, but does have an internal particle generation cooldown of 5.5 seconds. This means that even if you use Sacrificial Bow or have her at Constellation 1, firing a second skill consecutively will not generate any animal particles until after the cooldown. You can also dash cancel this skill immediately after casting it to start your charge shot more quickly. Prior to C6, leveling this talent is not very important since the damage multipliers are pretty low. However, at C6, you'll be triggering the skill a lot more with your on-field character, so leveling it is recommended since it's basically free damage when it's off-field anyways. Faruzan's burst is the core part of her kit. Upon cast, Faruzan will unleash her polyhedron that deals AoE animal damage and triangulates across the field in a set AoE. The polyhedron pulses at each triangulated point and applies several effects. Firstly, it applies the same 30% animal resistance shred that was mentioned with her skill to any enemies under the AoE of the polyhedron's pulses. Secondly, if any character is under the pulsing AoE, the entire party will also gain animal damage bonus, the amount of which scales directly off this burst's talent level. If you have Faruzan at C6, the polyhedron grants one more effect. 
namely a 40% crit damage increase to any attacks that deal animal damage. The polyhedron's total AoE is actually deceptively big, but the actual pulse radius is obviously much smaller. So this can be a problem if enemies are more spread out, since these buffs only last 4 seconds per time, meaning you will have to avoid moving out of the polyhedron's AoE so that you can maintain the effects of the burst. Keep in mind that these buffs also apply to the initial damage when casting this burst since the polyhedron pulses immediately on cast. The polyhedron pulses once every 2 seconds at each point, so in total there will be a maximum of 9 pulses if you have Farazan at least at Constellation 2. However, this burst's biggest con is its massively high energy cost of 80. Prior to C6, Farazan's own energy generation is not fantastic, which drives her ER requirements up by a ton. We'll get more into her energy recharge requirements later in the artifact section, but suffice to say that this burst is easily the most important talent since its animal damage buff scales directly off of it. If you have Farazan at C6, this burst also gains both energy generation as well as crowd control capabilities thanks to it being able to proc her skill off field, but we'll go over this later in more detail when we get to the constellation section. This burst has an okay damage multiplier of 802.4%, which is good for crit builds, has a 12 second uptime at C0, which extends to 18 seconds at C2, and has a 20 second cooldown. Finally moving on to her passive talents, her A1 was already mentioned earlier, but basically this allows her skill to have the same animal resistance shred as her burst. Her A4 is, uh, interesting? In a similar vein to Bennett and Sara, when any character that has been affected by the polyhedron's pulses deals animal damage, they get a flat attack buff, scaling off 32% of Farazan's base attack. Just to clarify, base attack is only calculated from the character's own attack and the base attack of the weapon. This base attack cannot be increased by artifact substats or weapon passives. The biggest con is that this A4 only applies to one attack every 0.8 seconds rather than all attacks all the time. So I would not prioritize using a higher base attack weapon unless you are very comfortable with your energy recharge quota. So unless you're performing nukes, I still recommend using an energy recharge weapon to maintain burst uptime rather than try to maximize on this attack buff. Moving on to weapon options, Farazan has a surprisingly limited weapon pool due to her egregiously high ER requirements. So in general, any non-ER weapons are usually not recommended. I'll go over the weapons in order of star rarity first, then give a weapon ranking at the end. Did I give a weapon ranking at the end? Kicking off the list, we have the Elegy for the end. This gives the biggest damage boost due to its team buffing passive, as well as decent base attack. There's quite a lot of ER in its substat, but its passive will cost you field time for Farazan to proc it if she's not at C6. If she is at C6, triggering this passive is quite easy, but does have some ramp up time if you just cast a burst and immediately swap her off. This weapon is quite good for her, though its EM buff isn't super useful for both Wanderer or Xiao. Aside from Elegy, I don't really recommend any other 5 star weapon as they make it very difficult to hit her ER quota. However, there are slight exceptions. For those playing Farazan for damage as well, Aqua Simulacra and Skyward Harp are both good options. Skyward Harp has the higher base attack and so helps her A4 buff another teammate more. But as mentioned in the talent section, increasing her A4 is not very high value so I don't always recommend focusing on base attack. For the highest personal damage possible, Aqua Simulacra is unsurprisingly the top option, offering low base attack but the highest crit damage possible with a universally damaging passive. Moving on to the 4 star options, the general option I recommend to everyone playing Farzan is going to be the Favonius Warbow. This bow has low base attack but a huge amount of ER in its substat while providing energy to the whole team thanks to its passive. This helps her and her team a ton, especially if you don't have her at C6 where you are going to struggle to get enough energy for her burst. It's also especially helpful for Xiao who has a similar problem of poor energy generation. This is unquestionably Farzan's general best option and thus my top recommendation. Sacrificial Bow is up next due to it also being an ER weapon. However, because Farazan's skill has a particle generation cooldown of 5.5 seconds, the passive of this weapon is relatively wasted as it cannot increase her energy generation. Additionally, you will be extending Farazan's field time by quite a lot if you do fire another charge shot, which honestly is a bigger waste of time. As such, this weapon is mainly an ER stat stick and should only be used if you don't have a spare Favonius Warbow and are already using this weapon on another character. Finally, the last ER options are going to be End of the Line and Fading Twilight. Both are free weapons and while having less ER, do offer better personal damage than Favonius and Sack for Farazan. I personally use Fading Twilight because of its higher base attack and higher damage, but also because I have little to no energy problems. Without Farazan at C6, I have a very hard time recommending these weapons due to them not being the best for Farazan's burst uptime. 
So yeah, Farazan's weapon options are unfortunately mainly limited to energy recharge options. It's just very difficult to recommend offensive options due to her egregiously high ER requirements pre-C6, and even at C6, you are better off running the ER options anyway, since Farazan's own damage contribution is not super high. While her polyhedron's damage multiplier is decent, and her skill can contribute a decent amount of DPS at C6, in a support role, her DPS is relatively negligible. <laughs> Moving on to artifact stats. As you might have guessed, Farazan's first and foremost important stat is going to be energy recharge. How much ER you will need will also highly depend on her constellation level. In general, pre-C6 Farazans will need more than 250% ER for burst uptime, even with Favonius. That's honestly the bare minimum since Farazan cannot generate energy off field. For my C6 gamers, it's kind of hard to determine exactly how much ER you need. For me, I have 240% ER and pretty comfortably get my burst back almost every time and even without Favonius. So I think it's safe to say that Favonius users at C6 will only need around 220% ER to be decently comfortable. Of course, this can be lower if you often swap into Farazan to cast a skill. I personally find at C6, you rarely have to do that. For actual artifact main stats, her sands should very obviously be energy recharge, her goblet should be animal damage, and her circlet should be crit. The actual quality of the artifacts can be built up over time, but you should prioritize her energy recharge stats first. You might also notice that I am running an attack percent goblet instead of an animal one. The simple reason is that I don't have another spare animal goblet. And attack percent is actually reasonable for Farzan since her burst receives her own damage bonus buff anyway, which means the need for percentage damage bonus in your artifact main stat is a bit less necessary. My attack goblet has very good stats, so just use whatever artifact has better substats for better stat distribution. Okay, moving on to artifact sets. Now, despite being a support character, Farzan's sets are not actually very important, especially if you are trying to force a set that would disable you from hitting certain ER requirements. So for her, just use whatever you have, then focus on the sets as a bonus. Kicking things off, we have 4-piece Noblesse Oblige. This is a pretty well-known set at this point, granting a party-wide attack bonus when you cast your burst. The biggest problem I have with this set is that the three main animal characters you are likely running Farazan alongside, namely Xiao, Wanderer, and Kazaha, all use Bennett to some degree, in which Bennett is normally the Noblesse holder in the team anyways. Because Noblesse's passive cannot stack, this makes running this set relatively useless if your Bennett is already using it. For the next set, we have 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith. This set is particularly good if you have Farazan at C6, since she can easily maintain full stacks of the 4-piece set bonus from her burst alone, giving the entire party a decent attack bonus. Running this set will also allow it to be stacked with Noblesse, and thus easier if you play with Bennett. This is generally the set I recommend for most Farazan players, and should be easier to obtain when it comes to the strongbox in 4.0. Finally, her other options aren't as good for support, but can be good for quality of life or damage. Two or four piece Emblem of Severed Fate can be good for helping her ER thresholds and increasing her polyhedron damage. Other two piece sets will be good for damage as well, such as the attack percent sets or animal damage sets like Veridus and Venera. Speaking of Veridus and Venera, four piece Veridus and Venera can be a good option if you happen to play with any pyro, hydro, cryo, electro elements in a team that can contribute a significant amount of damage. But aside from Hazo teams, I will rarely see this happening. Also keep in mind that Viridus and Venera does not work off field, so even if you have Farazan at C6, you will still need to swap into Farazan for the resistance shred. Now, Farazan's teams are pretty straightforward since she's mainly relegated to animal-focused DPSs. Ideally, your animal DPS would be Xiao, Wanderer, Heizo, or Kazaha. A common thing for these DPSs as well is that they all happen to use or at least greatly benefit from having Bennett in the party. So normally, you would have one flex slot here. If you're already playing an animal DPS, then obviously having a constellation for a gene would be ideal. However, most people obviously don't have a constellation for a gene, in which case you can substitute her for another support or sub DPS. For Xiao, that will usually be someone like Albedo or Zhongli, and for Wanderer, it will likely be someone like Yun Jin. It really heavily depends. Now, the obvious question is would Farazan be worth using in these teams prior to C6? The answer is, as usual, it depends. For Xiao teams, it might still be worth it since there are so few ways to get extra damage out of his team. For someone like Wanderer, I normally just use Yelan instead since my Yelan contributes so much damage to the team. 
For DPS Kazaha, it probably won't be worth it if you already have a well-built Xiangling and Xingqiu, who will likely contribute more damage. But if you don't, then I can see a non-C6 Farazan still pulling her weight. Personally, I find non-C6 Farazan very difficult to use, but I also understand that some people may have to use her out of necessity. My own free-to-play account only has her at Constellation 3 after all, so I do know the pain of having a non-C6 Farazan. Now, for those who don't have an Animal DPS, I honestly have a very hard time crafting teams with Farazan. Not only will Farazan have to have VV and C6 to even be useful, but her actual usefulness is not even that great. Seriously, if you don't have an animal DPS, just, just don't play Farazan. Alright, moving on to Farazan's constellations. Constellation 1. This gives Farazan one extra charge of her skills, Charge Shot. Unfortunately, this constellation isn't particularly helpful due to the particle generation cooldown of 5.5 seconds, which means that even if you do the second Charge Shot immediately, you won't get any particles from it anyway. This constellation can help as extra crowd control, but is otherwise relatively useless. Constellation 2, one of Farazan's most important constellations. This increases her polyhedron duration by 6 seconds, which gives it permanent buff uptime if you have enough energy recharge. Aside from her C6, this is Farazan's next most important constellation to have. Constellation 3 and Constellation 5 increase her skill and burst talents by 3 levels respectively. Constellation 5 in particular will increase her animal damage buff, so it's a pretty good constellation to have. Constellation 4. This gives Farazan flat energy refund when her pressurized collapse from her skill hits enemies, up to a maximum of 4 energy per time. This constellation by itself isn't actually very helpful, but gains a lot more utility at C6. Keep in mind that because the energy refund is flat, this is not affected by energy recharge stats. Constellation 6, by far Farazan's most important constellation. With this, Farazan's burst will now allow the active character to trigger pressurized collapses every 3 seconds when they deal damage to enemies. This gives characters who usually tend to struggle with crowd control, like Xiao, better quality of life gameplay. The pressurized collapse damage scales off her elemental skill multipliers, which allows it to contribute much more damage. It also provides the same flat energy refund that her constellation 4 provides, which means that this dramatically lowers Farazan's ER requirements, usually by around 20% or more, depending on the situation. When pressurized collapses occur, they will generate the same animal particles as her skill, with the same particle generation cooldown even when Farazan is off field, which means that ideally with this constellation, Farazan no longer has to cast the skill on field when built with enough energy recharge, since she can get so much of her energy back when her polyhedron is active. The additional particles also help the on-field animal DPS with burst uptime, especially ones that really need them, like Xiao or a Shiminawa's Reminiscence Wanderer. Finally, it also gives an additional 40% animal crit damage to any character affected by the polyhedron pulses, which is obviously big as a DPS boost. Considering how much I've talked about her C6 in this guide, it should be unsurprising that this is Farazan's most important constellation, decreasing her ER requirements and increasing the team damage by a ton. But yeah, to sum it up, Farazan is unfortunately very constellation dependent. Her constellation 2 IMO is the bare minimum you need to play her, but even then, it's very difficult without her C6. It's just the way the character was designed, so for those pulling, I hope you don't end up like me and have to spend $500 for C6 Farazan. Finally, onto the Abyss Showcase. I'll be using three different Farazans for three different teams with Xiao, Wanderer, and Kazaha all along the top half of Abyss 12. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching this Hatsune Miku guide. I hope it was useful, and I wish everyone the best of luck pulling Farazan. Do check out twitch.tv slash dukc as well, where I often stream Genshin Impact. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.